Hi divers, Alec Pierce here from Scuba 2000. Today we start our brand new playlist, the one I've been promising you, Sea Hunt Remembered. Sea Hunt, one of the biggest television shows that ever existed. And Sea Hunt has influenced every diver that walks today. Now, if you're under 30 years of age, you've probably never heard of Sea Hunt. But trust me, your instructor has. And if he hasn't, his instructor did. Sea Hunt ran on TV from 1958 to 1962, not a long period of time, 155 episodes. Now, these are the old days. These were black and white. That's right. I'm going to show you some film in just a minute of uh, some of the Sea Hunt episodes. And it became an overnight sensation. In a matter of two or three months, Mike Nelson, played by Lloyd Bridges, famous actor Lloyd Bridges, became the biggest TV sensation around the world. And the Sea Hunt generation was born. Today, there are groups all over the world who regularly meet to honor Sea Hunt. We take part in scenarios. In fact, I'm wearing a shirt from the most recent Sea Hunt Forever event that was held in Silver Springs. Silver Spring is special for Sea Hunt fans because of the 155 episodes that were filmed and produced, about 100 of those were shot in Silver Springs, Florida. The show was based in California. Mike Nelson, you see, the, uh, the actor, the, the famous person on the show, the star of the show, if you like, he was actually an ex-Navy frogman. And uh, after he had finished his stint in the Navy, he had lived in California, and he was a scuba diver, obviously, and he started the business. And uh, what he did essentially was offer his services as a professional diver. And he got involved in all kinds of things. Some of them were pretty mundane. He would go down and look for something that somebody had lost. Uh, sometimes he got involved with, uh, with people who weren't very nice. He ended up fighting some criminals. He did scientific research. He was attacked by a boa constrictor in, 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 in the Amazon one time. Oh, they were fantastic episodes. You need to remember that at that time, the hottest thing on TV was Ponderosa or... Gunsmoke. Great shows. I loved them all. But they were westerns, and there were lots of them, and we'd seen them for many, many years. And then suddenly, this very charismatic, good-looking, fit, energetic man started getting involved with criminals, and the government, and spies, and dangerous animals. And he was a scuba diver. Scuba diving was new in those days. Brand spanking new. I had just got interested in scuba diving myself. As a matter of fact, 1958, the year the sea hunt began, it's the first year I tried scuba diving, and I was hooked. I've been diving, scuba diving, teaching scuba diving, and running a scuba diving business ever since. It was fantastic. Let me tell you, first of all, a little bit about the show, uh, and, and, and just give you some idea of how famous it was, and then I'm going to show you some of the things that we're going to talk about on this playlist. There are going to be a lot of them, because I have a big, big collection, the largest in the world, Sea Hunt memorabilia. And we're going to take one little item for each one of these episodes, and concentrate on that one item. I really hope you'll enjoy it. I know that the Sea Hunt aficionados out there will enjoy it. I'm going to wave to them right now. I know a lot of you. I hope you enjoy this and get a kick out of watching me and, and learning a bit more about my Sea Hunt collection. But new recruits to the Sea Hunt fad, well, we welcome you for sure. It's amazing when we go to our Sea Hunt scenarios. We've had several of them already around the world. How many young people come up and say, wow, that looks really exciting. And we think it's fantastic. So how big was Sea Hunt? First of all, it's kind of interesting that the story of Mike Nelson, the proposed story, the TV program, Mike Nelson, was a little bit far-fetched for its day. Remember, it was a time of Westerns, and, and they came up with this idea of having an underwater show, a Frogman show. The big TV studio said, nah, that won't sell, that won't work. So a smaller television production company called Ziv, Z-I-V, Productions, said, we'll give it a try. And it became an overnight hit. I'm sure those big studios were kicking their butts when they realized just how big Sea Hunt became. Sea Hunt was fantastic. Exciting, new, leading edge technology, excitement, spies, danger, all the things that we enjoy even today. And it involved the underwater world, which you must remember was new then. Today, scuba diving is you know, pretty mundane. Everybody today knows that scuba diving is safe and fun. But back then, oh no, no, scuba divers were lived on the edge. You know, you went scuba diving, you took your life in your hand each time. Each time. So, so it made the show very, very exciting. And it spread, it spread quickly, of course, across North America, into Canada, and then it spread around the world. It was very soon in Mexico, South America, and then it jumped the ocean. 
Big in the UK, really big in Germany for some reason, strange reason, and on it went. Just how big was Sihan? Well, let me give you some examples. First of all, here's an ad. Now, a TV show that is not being doing a very good job doesn't get a beautiful ad like this. I have a box full of advertisements. This is an advertisement from Pennsylvania. And you can see right on this how they say, Sea Hunt, it's big. There's a picture of Mike Nelson himself, famous picture of Mike Nelson diving. I have dozens and dozens of these advertisements. And through this playlist, I'm going to share some of them with you, some of the special ones. How big was Sea Hunt? Well, I just showed you that TV ad about TV guides. I have TV guides from almost every state in the Union, from across Canada, like this one. This is from Pennsylvania. How about this one? TV guide. That sure looks like Mike Nelson to me. There's another one. Boy, there's Mike Nelson again from Australia. That's right. TV guides featuring Mike Nelson from Sea Hunt as far away as Australia. It was a big, big show. Here's another example of how big it was. 1964. The show had actually ended already, but the Sea Hunt craze was so big that Sea Hunt was featured at the 1964 New York World Fair. They had its own big exhibit. Discount coupons and special handouts. Mike Nelson was there. They had a big aquarium filled with divers and mermaids and so on. See how it was that big that the New York World's Fair in 64 really needed to have something about Sea Hunt in it. How big was it again? Skin Diver Magazine. Skin Diver Magazine was for many, many years, almost 50 years, the single most important scuba diving magazine in the world. They had articles from all over the world, all kinds of different personalities, diving activities, and so on. This is obviously a Mike Nelson from Sea Hunt on the front cover of the Skin Diver magazine from 62. Mike Nelson, Sea Hunt, was featured on six Skin Diver magazine covers, six of them, more than anybody else. Jacques Cousteau, great uh, uh, con contributor to the sport of scuba diving and marine awareness around the world. He was on three. Sea Hunt was a big deal. Uh, Cracked Magazine. Remember that? Cracked Magazine. Sea Hunt. Mad Magazine. Sea Hunt. A couple of times. It was a big show. To get in the Mad Magazine, you had to be pretty hot. In fact, <clears throat> it was so good that many actors that you know today were unknown at that particular time. Lloyd Bridges was a very generous man, and he often brought young actors into the show to work with him. You may have heard of a man called Leonard Nimoy. Uh huh. Recently passed away, unfortunately. Leonard Nimoy, better known, obviously, as Mr. Spock in the TV series that also became very famous, Star Trek. But Leonard Nimoy started his career on Sea Hunt. How about, you may have heard of that gentleman, I think he's pretty famous, Jack Nicholson. That's right, the Jack Nicholson, Oscar Award winner, started on Sea Hunt. Of course, Jeff Bridges. And Bo Bridges, Jeff Bridges is an Oscar Award winner, and Bo Bridges is a famous director and actor in his own right, and their children as well now are getting into the business. But Bo Jeff and Bo Bridges started on Sea Hunt. Jeff was only about six years old when Lloyd brought him in and had him play, obviously, a, a kid. Lost his bicycle. I remember that episode. It was one of the most exciting. Ross Martin, uh, Ron Foster, Larry Hagman. You all learned to hate Larry Hagman later when he was famous, but he started on Sea Hunt. A lot of people started on Sea Hunt. As the Sea Hunt fad grew, naturally the TV, uh, the TV production uh, uh, people wanted to, to, to sell more advertising on the show. That's how they make their money. I'm not sure if you know that. Maybe you do. You get to watch the ads. So what they had to do was promote the show even more. And they did that in a variety of ways. Obviously the TV guides, articles, interviews with, with uh, Lloyd Bridges and so on. And they were all very famous. But since it was a kid's show, they also wanted to appeal to the kids, and so they produced a lot of items, a lot of stuff, if you like, that emphasized Sea Hunt that was sold to the kids. Let me give you some examples. How about a jigsaw puzzle? Now, a jigsaw puzzle. Sea Hunt. Put it together, and you can have a beautiful picture. They wrote a book. There was a book written about Sea Hunt, a hardcover book. This is one of the famous Whitman series books. There were a lot of these books, all the famous westerns, and there's one on Sea Hunt. In fact, this book was so famous <clears throat> that it was reprinted in different languages. There it is in Mexican. There it is in German. I told you Sea Hunt was big. In fact, in Germany, for some strange reason, Sea Hunt was very, very big in Germany. In Germany, they took those books and they actually made them into a series of hardcover comics. Now, this is actually a comic book. It's a hardcover, see? 
a hardcover, and inside is a, is, is a comic, a story with comic pictures inside. There's lots of these. In the, uh, in the upcoming uh, episodes of, uh, of the Sea Hunt Remembered uh, playlist, I'm going to take each one of these little items and share some details about it. Some of them are very, very rare. Some are not so rare, but some are very, very rare. I'm going to share that with you over these, over these next few weeks. Um, give you some idea of, of, of the passion that I have had for Sea Hunt. Uh, my wife calls it a sickness, but it's really just a passion. Let me give you an example. There was a book called <clears throat> Mask and Flippers. It was uh, supposedly written by Lloyd Bridges, Mike Nelson. He had some help from another famous diver, Bill Barada. But this was quite a, quite a well-known book. <clears throat> I have this in my collection, of course. It's very common. But I also have the hardcover version. It was put out in a hardcover version as well. And I have three other copies of the same book. So why do I have five copies of Mask and Flippers? Why would I do that? Well, there's a reason for that. And I'll explain those reasons as we go into details on my collection. I'll give you another example. A lot of toys, as I mentioned. You may not remember, I'm sure a lot of you don't, unless you're over 50 years of age, you may not remember the mini viewer. The mini viewer. This is, uh, what would this be, Kevin? This would be a DVD from the 50s, maybe? Some of you may remember, may, may remember Viewmaster. The Viewmaster, you put the disc in and you click, looked at the light. Put, this actually predates the Viewmaster. This is a little plastic toy with a button on top. And when you bought this at the corner store for $1.95, you got two film strips. And those film strips fit into the plastic toy, hold it to your eye, up to the light, and turn it, and you can actually watch a film strip version of one of the Sea Hunt episodes. Neat little toy. Other stuff as well. This is from the UK. This is uh, Barrett's Sea Hunt little booklet. And in the booklet, you could paste the cards that you collected. Where'd you get the cards from? Well, these were known as T cards, T-E-A cards. And you got them, this is pretty neat as well, you got them when you went and bought cigarettes. No, not real cigarettes. Remember, this is for children. So here I have a package, Barrett's Candy Cigarettes. And when you purchase this candy cigarettes, take a look there, Kevin. You can see Mike Nelson on the cover. When you open it up, took out your candy cigarette, inside the car, inside the little box, there was a card. It was one of those tea cards. And it had a short story about, about Mike Nelson, about Sea This is a very special one. It's an original box with the original cellophane and the original candy cigarettes inside. 60 years old. What's the likelihood of you finding a old candy wrapper with real candy cigarettes and say, I'll be talking about this sometime in the future, just how special this is. Mike Nelson was, was uh, and Sea Hunt was featured on a lot of TV books as well. So his, this is a television uh, uh, favorites put out in the UK in this particular case. And you can see some of these famous westerns on there. I mentioned some. The Lone Ranger, The Deputy, lots of them. This particular issue, and the same for about three of these, uh, and you see inside there are stories, colored comic book stories. This particular issue has a big picture there of Mike Nelson. And on the back as well, there's Mike Nelson again. Mike Nelson, CN, was big. How about this book, again, from Europe? Another comic book, several comic books, hardcover. I don't know why they're so big on hardcovers over there, but they sure did. There's another comic album. This one is a softcover version with comics inside. How about a coloring book? There's a coloring book for the younger viewers of Sea Hunt. You could actually get this, and there are action pictures in there of Mike Nelson doing what he did best, helping people, saving people, solving crimes. All the little bits and pieces as well to show you how famous it was. I don't know if you can get in there close enough, Kevin, but this is a button, and it says on this button to watch Sea Hunt on your local TV program. This essentially is a promotional button about Sea Hunt. And along with something that small and special, if you were lucky enough to meet Lloyd Bridges, or if, if, if you met some of, the, some of the staff, then one of them might give you one of these very, very popular medallions. They're hard to find. The genuine, the real ones, made of aluminum. And in those days, aluminum was, was like platinum is today. Aluminum was very rare, very hard to find. So there is an actual Sea Hunt, Mike Nelson medallion that were given out to, to kids and to staff members and so on. So there he is. There's Mike Nelson. There's my buddy, Mike Nelson, in the background. This, by the way, is from the 1964 New York World's Fair. This cutout picture of Mike Nelson stood up there and promoted. There he is, standing in Silver Springs, in fact. We were just there a few months ago doing our Sea Hunt Forever episode, actually putting on uh, scenarios for the people that were visiting Silver Springs. 
in the old glass bottom boats, the glass bottom boats, you can see them in the background, they're still there, 60 years. We actually met some drivers of the boats, who were very old, obviously, who remembered taking Lloyd Bridges, as Mike Nelson, out to do his, his underwater episodes. This is exactly what it looked like in those days. Uh, a CD, uh, I mean, sorry, an LP. This is not a CD, it's an LP. Once again, for the young people, what is an LP? This is a record. You remember records? This is, a, this is an LP, an old 33 uh, LP that you put onto a special thing called a record player. <laughs> Some of the old people remember this record. Learn how to scuba dive with White Bridges from the famous show Sea Hunt. Sea Hunt was the very first TV show that was syndicated. What does that mean? So popular that they actually sent the shows, the episodes, out to television production studios all over North America. That's right. And then so your local show would then show it. So if you lived in Buffalo, Rochester, Toronto, Winnipeg, well, maybe not Winnipeg, but uh, lots of big cities all over North America, you could watch Sea Hunt on your local show. It was that popular. I actually have in my collection, and we'll talk a bit about this later, I have some of the original 16 millimeter films. As a matter of fact, I have about 100, over 100, of the original 155 episodes on original 16 millimeter films. These are the films that were mailed out to the TV studios. You can see them from Ziv Productions, and the mailing label went on there on the outside to show which episode it was. We'll talk about that in, uh, as we go on with this Sea Hunt Remembered playlist as well. I think you'll really enjoy it. What else do I have in my collection? Well, some pretty neat stuff. Obviously, Mike Nelson used scuba gear. So over the years, many, many years, I've been fortunate enough to look for, find, and acquire a lot of scuba gear. Now, I need to be honest with you, none of the scuba gear was ever touched by Mike Nelson. This is not his scuba gear. Unfortunately, the best of our ability anyway, we found out from uh, Mike Nelson's kids that all the original scuba gear that was used in Sea Hound is gone, with one exception, which I'll talk about in one of my episodes. There's one piece of equipment that, that is still and still being used. I'll talk to you about that. But these are all the same piece of equipment. Let me explain what I mean. This is a knife, obviously. This is one of the knives that Mike Nelson used in his episodes. It's called the Vulcan knife. Kind of special. It's a dive knife, as you can see, special sheath and so on. This one is in absolutely perfect condition, like new. This is one of the knives used in his TV show. This is the other knife. There are really only two knives ever used. Some of you may recognize this knife. This is the famous World War II uh, K-bar knife, Navy knife, uh, that was used in World War II. Very, very popular dive knife, and this was used by Mike Nelson in his shows as well. So these are examples of the equipment that was used in the Sea Hunt TV show. I have more as well. I have his fins. These are the kind of fins. In fact, if we go back to this picture, and this is how I know these are the fins he used. There are the fins. There's his knife. My goodness, look at that, Kevin. There's his actual knife. And what else does he got? There's his mask. Let me talk about the mask for just one moment. This is the famous Voight B4 mask. Voight is a very, very well-known company. Uh, long gone now, unfortunately. Made a lot of diving equipment for many, many years. And uh, Voight was uh, sort of the equipment of choice for Ziv production in the filming of Sea Hunt. And this particular mask, it's called the B4, is the mask that Mike Nelson used in all of his episodes. So the mask became quite famous. Not a particularly good mask. Realize it's 60 years old. And Voight made many, many other masks, probably a dozen different masks. Some were better uh, than, the, the, than the before. And their masks sold, well, the, the price tag on this particular mask is $3.95. These masks sold at the time for anywhere between $3 and $10. You could buy a really good mask for six bucks. This B4 mask, this is a genuine, an original B4 mask made by Voight. It's the same type of mask, the same make and model that Mike Nelson sold, that, that Mike Nelson used. If you tried to purchase one of these today, you'd run into two problems. The first problem would be finding one. Very, very rare. They made a lot of them. They're very rare because they have been picked up by collectors, Voight collectors and Sea Hunt collectors. That's how popular that show is even today. The second problem you're going to face is paying for it. $6.95, probably $1,200 was what you would pay for a good, good B4 in the box with the strap today. You can get you can get one that's not quite so good for maybe five hundred dollars. Gives you an example just how popular Sea Hunt was, how special it was. Let's go on a little bit. Here's another piece of equipment that's very rare as well. This is a light that is used in several of the uh, Sea Hunt uh, uh, episodes. In fact, if you look at the original picture on the playlist, you'll see this light 
Mike Nelson is holding in his hands as he climbs a ladder at night. This, this is Mike Nelson's regulator. And again, here's another example of how popular, how popular the, the show was. This is called the, the Voight Lung. At the time that Mike Nelson and Sea Hunt came along, <clears throat> the word scuba diving had not been invented. During the uh, several years that it ran, all 155 episodes, we never once heard the word scuba. We hadn't uh, developed that word, hadn't thought of that word yet. Uh, scuba divers, what we would call scuba divers today, were called skin divers. And to differentiate uh, the, the, the skin divers who were really snorkelers from the guys that used tanks and regulators, sometimes the guys with regulators were called lung divers because they used a lung, I guess. So here's a very, very well-known uh, regulator made by this company, Voight. And you see the name on the regulator? Can you see it there, Kevin? It's called a Voight lung. <laughs> How about that? And here's another example. This regulator at the time in the 60s was sold for about $39. Real good regular, nothing special about it. Real good, there were lots of them, about $39. And you can buy a good quality Voigt regulator, similar to this, not the same model, oh, 150 bucks, get you one of those. This particular model, called the Green Label Voigt, with the hoses and the mouthpiece, all in original condition, because it was used on Sea Hunt, because Mike Nelson used it, would cost you over $1,000. Maybe a lot more than $1,000 in really good shape. Again, it's an indication of how popular the show was. What do we have over here? A couple more things. These two items in the back are kind of interesting. Part of my collection. I have an old lantern there. And this is a lamp. It's actually, I don't know if you see the light on in behind it. There's a light behind it. This is actually a lamp. It's just an ordinary old table lamp. Oh, why do I have that? It obviously wasn't used underwater. No, it wasn't. I have a small collection of props from the show. So these two items and the other items that I have, props from the show, were used in the show. At some point, some episode, Mike Nelson walked into a room and this lamp was sitting on the wall or sitting on the table. This particular, and same with that lantern. So I have some props from the show. I'm gonna share some of those props from the show. Show them to you, try to tell you which episode they're in, because you can actually see the episodes. If you go to YouTube now, you can punch in Sea Hunt, see a lot of them. I'll also explain to you how I know for sure that these are actually props from the show. There is a way to do that. And I know that these two items are props from the show. I have a lot of props. I haven't got them all in my collection because I haven't determined for sure that they actually are, were props. I won't do that until I know these were for sure. What about this? Well, anybody that's seen the Sea Hound episode will know what this is. This is the famous Jack Brown commercial diver's mask that Mike Nelson puts on at the very beginning of each show. When you start to hear that eerie, special orchestral music that to everybody says, Sea Hunt. Sea hunt. Then you see Mike Nelson walk out. He looks out over the ocean. Then he starts to put this mask on. This is the famous Jack Brown mask that's used by Mike Nelson in the show. Games. I forgot about the games. Puzzles and games. There were sea hunt games that made up the board games. Board games were big in those days. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't have computers or, cell or phones and, and, and all kinds of games. There was no, no um, game box or anything else. So we had board games. Lots of stuff like that. Well, that's an idea, folks, of, uh, oh, 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 yes, good, I should point this out, too. Again, this is from the World's Fair. I know this was used at the World's Fair. I didn't get it there, but I know it was. And there's a lot of clues as well. First of all, it is a medal, a medal sign. And it talks about the gigantic pool that they had there with Lloyd Bridges, famous because of Sea Hunt, and thousands and thousands of people went to see the Sea Hunt display at the World's Fair. It's rusty along the bottom because it was a gigantic pool there and the ground was always wet. And you could go there and you could meet Lloyd Bridges and the kids lined up for hours sometimes to meet Lloyd Bridges, Mike Nelson, their hero, and get something signed by him. I have many, many things signed by Lloyd Bridges. Makes them special to me as well. That gives you some idea, folks, a little bit about my, my collection and what I'm going to do in the collection. I'm going to show you a lot of neat things. I'm going to play pinball you know, on Sea Hunt. See how the pinball game. I'm going to show you spear guns, very special spear guns. I'm going to show you the comic book collection, which is the single most common item. The comic book collection it comes from all over the world. I have 100 comic books in my collection from different countries, different languages, and they're all very, very special. I'll share some tips on collecting. I'll also give you an idea on the value of items. Some items are very, very valuable because they're hard to find, obviously. Other items, even though people may call them rare, aren't so rare. If you're looking for comic books, it's easy, and other things as well. So I'll share all that kind of information with you. And all along the way, uh, hopefully I'll get you excited about Sea Hunt. I've been watching Sea Hunt since 1958. 
If you do a little bit of quick math, that is, what is that? Uh, that's 58 years. I think it's 58 years ago. So for almost 60 years, I've been watching the Sea Hound episodes, talking about Mike Nelson, talking about Lloyd Bridges. And I think you can tell from just listening to me right now, it still excites me. I still think I'm a 10-year-old boy back there watching Sea Hound. And then getting my own mask and snorkels and slipping out to Lake Ontario and pretending I'm Mike Nelson with a knife in the hand. He probably stole it from my mother, kitchen knife. Going out there and trying to find something, making sure I was safe. It was a lot of fun. I hope I'll be able to instill some of that excitement, some of that passion for Sea Hunt, so you'll better understand what Sea Hunt was all about. I hope so. I'll talk to you real soon. Sea Hunt Remembered with Alec Pierce from Scuba 2000.